I'm probably going to catch a lot of flack for this, but I really, really don't like Slap Chop. But I'm not the target audience for Slap Chop. Slap Chop is aimed at gamers, war gamers, for creating large armies very, very quickly. Which is fine, I have no issues with that at all. If I was creating an army, uh, I would probably want something that would be nice and fast as well. Maybe. Anyway, uh, I generally don't try and script these kinds of videos. Um, and I still haven't done on this one. So apologies if there's a little bit disjointed, uh, a little bit rambling, maybe. We've got 11 minutes-ish to, uh, to go through this. Now, I didn't really want to sound too harsh towards Slapchop itself. There is nothing inherently wrong with the technique. It's great for war gamers. You can get an army on the table very, very quickly. If you want something that's better than normal, then it, it does work quite well. But from a painter's perspective, it's just not right. It doesn't, uh, for, for starters, okay, let's go through um, the things I don't like about it. You've got very little control. So you've got a, for those who don't know, slap chop is effectively, you are dry brushing in various shades of gray and up to white, uh, selectively on a miniature to simulate how light would fall on it. The problem you've got is that dry brushing inherently leaves texture, which on its own is fine. Texture is a good thing but this is a uniform texture over every surface, uh, which is not ideal. You want to be able to vary the kinds of textures you put on the miniature, depending on, say, smooth armor, rough fur, or a, or a piece of cloth that you want a little bit more texture on that doesn't have it sculpted on there. Um, you've also got the fact that dry brushing, if you are not familiar with it, then it is very, very easy to leave an actual physical texture if you get the paint, say, too thick, too much on the brush. For a beginner, it is really, really easy to just leave an actual physical texture. So, for example, if you you dry brushed a miniature and then primed it again, you would see the, the actual lumps and bumps in the surface um, from the dry brushing on the miniature. There's also the fact that on uh, on videos you don't see a lot of this texture, but when you hold the miniature in the hand, you can tell that it's been dry brushed. Again, for war gaming, for getting an army on the tabletop, fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You can do it fast. It looks good, and and that's all there is to it. Uh, what I should point out is I completely forgot to mention is that once you've dry brushed all of the the greys and whites on you then layer over transparent paints to create uh, the, your color scheme so for example uh, games workshops contrast paints you've got the vallejo express paints um, army painters speed paints things like that or just normal paints you've thinned down so the other problem with it it doesn't simulate light properly you're moving a brush backwards and forwards you're catching places on a miniature that light actually probably wouldn't, would either not catch or wouldn't catch in quite the right way. So you're hitting all of the edges, you're hitting all of the detail with exactly the same thing. You've got a, a backwards and forwards motion, whereas light, obviously it does bounce, but generally moves in one direction from source to where it's hitting. There are certain parts that it's going to be uh, sort of underexposed, overexposed, if you think of it in photography terms. Doing what I'm doing here on the video, and you're actually physically painting it, you can more accurately capture how light hits on various surfaces. You can moderate your smoothness for certain things, and you've also got the option to do details. So for example, that's a sort of fly shape on the uh, shoulder pad. Uh, I can pick that out in uh, a non-metallic sort of effect. Now, I wouldn't be able to do that with dry brushing because you've got a bigger brush and you're just hitting the whole thing. There's there's no nuance to it. There's no, there's no subtlety. Slap Chop inherently doesn't teach a, a painter good things about actually learning to paint. It is all about speed. But 
here's the other thing as well. It is never professed to be anything other than a technique specifically for speed. Um, I think a lot of people have latched onto it though as a way of going, oh look, I can make everything look amazing now. This has improved my painting so much. Maybe it has, but you've also stifled your painting quite a lot because you've got to this point and you're not aware of actual techniques, actual brush control, being able to actually put deliberate texture um, onto a miniature with a brush. Um, and I mean in uh, deliberately as in you're not creating physical texture, you're creating the illusion of texture with paint through uh, lines, dots, scratches, stippling, all that, all, all that jazz. I think what I'm trying to get at is that although there aren't any rules to painting, you can do absolutely anything you want. However you want to paint is how you paint. Do it, do whatever you feel comfortable with. But if your actual goal is to improve and to get better at painting and to aspire to levels of, for example, Golden Demon or your favorite painter, say Richard Gray, Treverian, got uh, um, I believe it's Emil from uh, Age of Squidmar, um, Jose Da Vinci I believe his name is, and then we got Sergio Calvo, all those sorts of names. If you want to aspire to that sort of painting then you are doing yourself a disservice by using the slap chop method. Anyway, uh, this video has been a little bit of an experiment uh, just as something just slightly different my usual painting things just to see if it's something that people enjoy people like um, I probably won't do too many of these I don't like talking all that much so we shall see but let me know if you do like it if you do great maybe there'll be some more if there's certain topics that you want me to cover then fine we can we can sort something out if you want to discuss what you think of benefits to um, to slap chop? Then great. If you think there's uh, a reason why uh, aspiring painters should use it, feel free. I'm always open to discussions. I'm not going to put anybody down. Uh, that's not why we're here. We're here to learn and to expand our minds. Um, I, you probably won't change mine, but maybe you'll change somebody else's. And if it helps somebody, great. Well, I'm all for that. If it helps even one person. We've done our jobs. So anyway, thank you very much all for wading through this rant <laughs> as, as such as it was. And we'll see you all next time. Thanks very much. Bye bye.